Hi, good afternoon. My name is uh, Nils Lingen, and as I said, I'm the CFO of uh, Gromir Group. And we enable predictive maintenance within substations. So we do this by installing sensors, collecting real-time data for analysis. And by doing this, we can improve the sustainability and efficiency for maintenance work at substations. So what the customer gets is automation, data insight, and analysis. And a little bit of who is our customer. Our customer, as I said, substations. Substation is the node that connects the electricity grid together. And this is how the electricity grid in Europe looks. It's been built out since the last 130 years. It looks pretty much structurally the same all over Europe, all over the world. And we've kind of taken this for granted. It looks a little bit like the road network. We take the it for granted that it works, the electricity comes to us when we want it. And I've been working with this for about 20 years. No one has ever talked to me about the electricity grid up until the last couple of years. Everyone got worried. My God, my electricity bill is so high. And I have to pay so much for electricity transmission. What is happening? There's something coming. There's something happening to our environment that we're working in. And if we're looking at what is happening in Sweden, investments have been about 30 billion sec per year this five-year period. What is happening then the next five years, which starts in two years, is this would almost double. So this will mean that we're going to invest 10,000 kroner per year per person in Sweden into the electricity grid. And why does the companies operating the electricity grid do this? It is to meet the increased electrification of the society, and in Sweden's case, industry. The industry in Sweden is electrifying, and therefore we need to have more transportation capacity. And to meet this increase in demand, we need to uh, have more sources of energy, and those should be renewable. So we need to integrate renewable sources into our electricity grid. We need to increase the flexibility and the quality of the grid. And also, as I said, they've been investing for 120 years. A lot of the components in the electricity grid are quite old. They need to be digitalized. So there's a huge opportunity and a huge need to do investments in the electricity grid. And who are our customers? Our customers are here at the bottom. And they have a challenge, and they have to act now to meet this uh, huge investment need coming. For example, Elevia, one of our big customers, who is distributing the electricity here in Stockholm. Uh, they invested last year 3.7 billion into their grid. And they see that they will have to more than double this in the years coming. And this is to then change today's electricity transmission net into the future's sustainable energy system. And they do this by uh, climate-smart energy solutions, and they do this by working with strategic partners, and we are one of their strategic partners, just as we are with Vattenfall, Öresundskraft, and Deutsche Bahn, when it comes to our expertise. And what is it that we do then? If you look how maintenance work has been done traditionally, it's been schedule-based, labor-heavy. So, a survey technician team is sent out to site. They might have to drive two hours, 30 minutes to come to site. Uh, they don't know what's happening at site. They just know they have to go there. Worst case, they have to go to site because there's an alarm being set up uh, off uh, in, in the operation rooms. And they don't know what tools to bring, for example. So how can we solve this issue? We're coming back to the transformer station again. What we do is that we install sensors and components that automate the maintenance. As I said, this, these stations have been built during 120 years. A large portion of the components are quite old. 
the average age of the components on the Swedish, in the Swedish electricity distribution net is 30 years old. So they are not connected, they're not digitalized. That is part of what we do. And by doing this, we can help our customer move from the schedule-based reactive maintenance work to predictive maintenance. And we can basically monitor and perform analysis on any components in, within the substation. And our solution consists of three parts. The edge technology, so the components that we actually put on site. Those are the ones that collect the data. Then we have our platform. And in the platform, we validate and perform analysis on the data. We do this in a secure environment. And what the customer sees, or needs to see, is, is, the, is the result of our analysis, which they get through their user interface. And most of our customers use our web app, our, our web page, or our, web app, or our phone app. Or we can also integrate into uh, whatever ERP system the customer is using. So what we do is that we provide our customers with data-driven benefits. So what we collected then last year, 2023, is 100 million measurement points we collected. Analyzing this, we could prevent over 6,000 oil spills for our customers. We reduced their CO2 emissions in, the, in their maintenance work by over uh, almost 57 tons of CO2. And they avoided almost 7,000 journeys to site. So that's a huge time saving for our customers. A little bit about Gomero as a group. We founded about, we're turning 22 this year. Uh, we have always been founded on customer driven uh, demands. So we have not invented something great and then tried to sell it. The customers come to us, we have a problem, can you help us solve it? And we've helped to solve it and they've paid from day one. So we show that they are, have an ability and a willingness to pay from day one. Uh, we have installations in nine countries with over 100 customers. Uh, we've been connected to the cloud for 18 years now, so we are well established. Uh, we do all our production both on the hardware side and, and the information side here in Sweden. Short lead times and the highest quality. And then if we look a bit about the financial development, but here I want to talk about our business model and where our revenues come from. So when we equip a substation with edge technology, that's what we call here system sales, the dark blue line, that's a one-time revenue or every 15 year. Because our hardware components have to last 15 years. But these hardware components have to be served. So we have an after sales that is recurring during these 15 years. And then on top of that, we have a subscription to get access to the analysis and have this secure infrastructure in place. So what's happening is that once we've sold the system, we have recurring revenues, which last year was 43% of our revenues, recurring every year for 15 years. And we basically have zero churn, so very stable uh, growing revenues with more systems being installed. The medium blue and the light blue together grow 38% last year. But we're not happy there. We want to grow after sales and subscription even more. So per system, we want to increase uh, the number of krona they pay per year for after sales and subscription. And we do that by providing even more customer benefit. We want to grow uh, on the penetration side. We want to have more sites with our customers. We want to equip all the sites with our customers in the end. And as I said earlier, uh, the electricity system looks the same all over the world. We are now in nine countries. We want to go in more countries internationally. Uh, we listed in 2018, and we've, as you saw on the previous day, we've been profitable ever since. Uh, still, the founders own about a third of the company, uh, with our chairman and the, some other of the management and, and, and the board, we own about 15% of the company. We have two financial investors that own 20% of the company together, so we have a fairly 
small free float, but uh, it's still trading on uh, Spotlight market. So to sum it up a little bit, uh, what we provide is sustainable, profitable growth. As I said, we've been profitable ever since we listed. And we do this by being innovative, working very close with our customers, listening to them, solving their problems, making sure that we get paid from day one, because then they will pay day two and year 15 as well, and then they'll buy a new system year uh, 16. Uh, clear customer benefits, providing predictive maintenance, uh, coming back to quality, the hardware and the systems have to work for 15 years. So they have to be very robust, very reliable and secure. IT security is high on the agenda for all our customers. And we score very highly there. So in the end, we create value by building and maintaining long-term partnership, both with our customers, our suppliers, our employees and our shareholders. So Tonko Krud, we are sustainable, we enable predictive maintenance, and we innovate through curiosity. Thank you. Well, thank you, Anis. That was quick, short, quick, and yeah. very interesting. No, no. But uh, can I just start by exposing my ignorance here and say, are you a software AI company enabling energy distribu uh, distributors, or are you an energy supplier that uses the latest technology? Where, where shall we put you here? We're not in the second camp, uh -huh. uh, for sure. Uh, we are somewhat in the first camp. For sure, we are a software provider. But what is unique with us, we have the hardware and the software together, really giving that full, uh, full solution uh, to the customer. So they know they can come to us for the hardware, for the com communication platform, and for the analysis or, or the software side, so to speak. So they don't, can rely on us for the full. So, so you, you're using the latest technology. And my, may I expose my, my ignorance here and, and say, is there any patents uh, involved in this? Do you need patent protections? Nope. No. We don't uh, believe in patents, really. As I said, we work very closely with the customer. Mm, yeah. The customers come to us with an, a, a need, mm. uh, a query that they want to have solved, and we help them solve it. Our customers are natural monopolies. Of course. So uh, there's no competition between them. Mm. So when Vattenfall has found a good supplier in Gomero, yeah. they tell Elevio. When Elevio is okay. happy with what they tell their neighbor, so to speak. Mm. And, that's and <clears throat> uh, if we look at your, let's say, competitors, and if we exclude the old bad ways, as you describe here, going out uh, and, and checking and not knowing what... Are there any other competitors that you meet in the door, or is it old technology and, let's say, lack of knowledge of you? Uh, no, I think our customers are, are pretty well informed, mm -hmm. uh, but they are slow moving. Okay. As I said, it's taken 120, 130 years mm -hmm. to build out the electricity grid up till now. Uh, the electricity consumption has been stable in Sweden for the last 35 years. It's been yep. a lot about maintenance, as we said, not a lot of new investments. What is happening now is they have to do these new investments to meet the future demand, which really requires them to rethink how they do. And there's not enough service technicians out there oh. to do uh, this schedule-based uh, reactive maintenance. They have to be much more informed. And what we see is some of our customers, they're moving the maintenance part of, of their agenda higher up on the strategic mm. uh, agenda. Mm. Yes, because, I mean, <clears throat> obviously, uh, if there's a lack of, um, let's say, um, controllers driving around and checking randomly, uh, and also you need to, uh, um, let's say, have a, a sufficient uh, utilization of it, then, then obviously you, you, you would look for new technology. I will take it. Um, uh, and, and what's the process of knocking on the door for a client and onboarding a client that, uh, so, so that you can, let's say, acknowledge the revenue stream? Is, is it a week? Is it a month? Mm -hmm. Is it a year? Good question. Very good question. I think most of our sales is with established customers, mm -hmm. where we're all well established. So whenever Elevio Vattenfall builds a new station, they call us and they equip their station with our equipment. 
uh, when it comes to completely new customers, completely new markets, it's a much longer lead time. Uh, and we see that trying to get into new territories, territories that it takes time. And coming into new customers that maybe have a different view of our value proposition, it takes time. But we're getting better and better. It's, does it matter if it's a new re jurisdiction, EI, another country? Is that, is that a hurdle or...? or Yes, sometimes, but it really we try to turn that back into a learning point and an opportunity to upsell to our yeah. current yeah. customers. For example, Germany, uh, the union there doesn't allow you to have an app oh, I see. tracking what you do at the uh, workplace. Mm -hmm. So, okay, and we had built our solution for them to click on the app, and now we did this, and now we do next. How, how can we do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, we do automatic tracking. Okay on our solutions. Oh, we take that from Germany, we sell it back into Sweden and the rest of the world. It gives us more recurring revenues, more of the sales revenue, better control. So, uh, I mean, by being in innovative and f flexible here, you, you will be able to ground the elephant, elephant anyway. Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, to me, it seems like a no-brainer if, if I'm a Vattenfall or, or uh, uh, delivering energy in, in, let's say, Germany or whatever, because, I mean, the cost of implementing you would be so much lower than, than the total investments in the grid, and obviously I need to, to secure. So, uh, first question is, why are there not clients banging on your door? Uh, they may be. And how do you find the clients or do they find you? Do, do you really need to work that hard? No, we need to work that hard. As I said, the clients that we have, they mm. understand uh, our value proposition. Yeah. Uh, some of them, when they do a new build, they install it, but they don't do our installations on their old substations, for mm. example, which we think is a bit weird. So then get, they end up with a mix. Uh, when you come to a new customer, can take a lot of time. You can have the maintenance uh, organization saying yes, and then you have the IT person saying, okay. ah, no. Okay. So it takes time to convince all those different stakeholders within the companies that... Uh, because go. you're unique, one could say. So it takes a while yeah, since we have the full, full, full solution, yes. Yeah. If we look at the mixture of your uh, your revenue or your sales, yeah. uh, system sales, after sales and subs subscription, um, is that something that you will keep, the, the percentage difference there, that so the bulk would be, uh, as I understand it, the system sales? Or would you like to have a third of everything? Is, is there a thinking there or is it just depending on the client? I think we haven't reached that level yet okay. where we're that stable. We want to have, we want to grow our penetration, mm. which means more system sales. Okay, you, you start with system sales. We start with mm. system sales. It starts there and then for 15 years, you have the off-the-market, okay. off-the-sales and, yeah. and the subscription. Okay. So, of course, we want to have a lot of system sales because that means that our installed base of systems increases, which gives us more off-the-sales and more subscription. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> if, we, um, if we look forward now for the, for the next coming uh, 12 months, uh, it, it, would there be any let's say, uh, any, any regulation changes or are, are you in any negotiation with any major clients or you want us to look for, let's say, press releases of, of new orders or regulation changes or what, what shall we be looking for? Or is it just, you know, uh, the, the quarterly which will uh, deliver the revenue and, and, uh, and the profit? No, I think uh, on the regulation, like uh, natural monopolies, mm -hmm. Uh, so the way that we are charged as consumers mm. uh, to the electricity grid is very well regulated. And that period for Sweden is set for the next four years mm. until 2027. So we don't see any changes okay. there uh, going uh, forward short term. Uh, and otherwise, I would advise you just to follow our, our news flow both on LinkedIn and uh, on our homepage to, for more updates and news. St steady as you go, as they say. Uh, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very interesting. And I think we will give you a warm hand as you leave the floor. <laughs>